Hello Ratbags, it's Jade with a first look today at an indie crafting adventure game that's coming out in 2022, but it's a free demo available now. In fact, it may be close to the end of the demo. I took a bit of time to get this video out, but I really want to show this game off. I think this game is great. I've been following its progress for about a year and a half now, maybe even a bit longer. Just found it really interesting, some of the stuff i come across on Twitter. I'm so pleased the game will be coming out on PC, Xbox, PlayStation and possibly other platforms too in 2022 and it's been published by Team 17. So what is the Serpent Rogue? Well the Serpent Rogue has you going through the world of Morbius or Mount Morbius. Uh, pretty much corruption seeds have been spread by the Serpent Rogue as it tries to overtake the realm. It's your job as a warden to confront it and restore balance to the natural order of things. Explore in the map, unearthing secret passages and gaining knowledge to stand against the incoming disasters. That's what it says on the Steam page. Um, you're going to be doing a lot of crafting and potion making. If you've ever played that part of Skyrim, well yes, you ate every single piece of food or ingredient just to see what properties it would give you and then you went and mixed loads of different potions, you are going to love this game. I think it's a really unique take on light survival, big adventure and lots and lots of that crafting and gathering sort mechanics with an element of roguelike in it as well you'll be going around creating different potions some that can transform you into other creatures some of that will help creatures become your allies and friends and various different ones that will give you poison buffs healing buffs depending on what kind of creature you are so it's got kind of taming in it and i definitely want to check out that more in the future so yeah let's go through everything don't forget to like make sure you subscribe and check out the let's play which i'm going to make available for members now and hopefully you'll see it when i publish it maybe at the weekend for everyone else so you're going to be doing a lot of examining creatures, items, resources, and pretty much try and determine whether or not they're going to be beneficial for you. I've got this corrupted doggo in this clip here, and you can see I've got some information possibly about what kind of damage he does, how much health he has, and a few other stats. And this is kind of a lot of the game. You need to find and research a lot about a lot of the creatures and items in the world. You're going to be using your journal quite a bit to look up some of the resources and see what they can do for you. The journal has a little section that has all the ingredients that you can find in the world so you can check out the resources and it's up to you to research them to find out their properties. It's also got a beastry which is going to give you even more information about the creatures and the different levels of the creatures that you can find in the world. You can pretty much have wolf doggos like these as your allies, human skeletons, as well as a variety of other creatures, even chickens and rats. As I said, it's a really cool game. It's pretty fleshed out for just a demo that's available right now. I think it's miles above a lot of early access games I've played recently. You will be doing kind of a bit tedious, gathering resources, getting items from barrels, as you would kind of expect in any kind of survival or RPG game. And it does look like it is randomly loot placed. You have a home where you can find, or an area where you can camp and pretty much cook stuff. You can brew new potions or research. So there's no actual base building in the game, but it's a case of being able to just use these spots and then go out into the wild and explore and get more resources or go through the story in the world. So here's the bit that if you're a big Skyrim fan, you're going to love. Absolutely popping new items into a crafting bench to craft new potions. Unlike Skyrim though, you have to do a little bit more than just simply try one item to eat it and find out a property. You are going to have to put quite a bit into the research table. There's also a good portion where you're going to be cooking it quite a bit as well to give you some stamina, to give you health. Again, pretty bog standard if you ever played a survival game, you know what to expect. Lots of grilled cheese going on here, but you will need certain recipes to craft certain items as well. And this is the research table where you put whatever is required inside and then eventually you'll gain the knowledge about what it does. You've got regions that add or take away and then you've got buffers or ingredients that you need as well to add to potions to make them even stronger. So it's going to be a while before I learn the properties of charcoal as I need 35 pieces before I can go ahead and brew a potion. There's various berries, plants, all sorts of resources like that that you're going to come across and gather. And once you've researched them, you'll then know the properties of what it pretty much does. So you can see here the blueberries, they add. So that's pretty much going to give you a potion that's going to give you something. And then you've got vitality coming from the aloe. But we're missing one more ingredient before I can really make a potion that will work. Otherwise, you kind of get this potion muck. After a bit more exploring, I found some more ingredients like fish bones or yeah, fish carcasses. And these are kind of the missing ingredient to make the potion into something actually useful. 
Now I've gone ahead and made myself a healing potion. And likewise, you're gonna also need to find items that may actually do damage against you, like poisons. Generally, it's all about hitting you at the moment that I've come across. I haven't come across any splash potions just yet. So you may need to take a poison drink because possibly a creature you've transformed into actually gets some benefits mm -hmm. from it. And a lot of the potions that you'll craft have dual uses. They might be good for giving you lots of attack damage, but they may take away a little bit of your life as you drink it. You'll also find armories or blacksmiths where you can augment some of your stuff later on and also create crafting materials and tools. So basically finding axes. Now you have to find recipes for some of this stuff. And in the demo, the recipe for the axe was kind of the other side of the explorable map. So it did find the early stages a bit grindy, but I persevered and it does seem it's quite random. But overall, I enjoyed the loop. It was quite nice. There are resources kind of scattered around, maybe a little bit too sporadic for my liking. I like to see a little bit more, but maybe get less of each resource so that you've got more abundance. But again, it's the demo and it's the early days, so I'm sure they may revamp that or add a bit more in the future. Or maybe not. Obviously, they want you to really think carefully about the creations you're making, whether or not they're going to help you in that moment. This game's made by like a really super tiny team. I'm not sure if it's one person, but it's definitely very small. I absolutely love the art style as well with these creatures and all these creatures you can see they've got benefits in being your allies. Pretty much the tethers that you're seeing they're connected so you've got all these little pets connected to that skeleton dude and you can even have him as a companion. So I haven't really mastered that yet I didn't get that far into the demo but I can't wait to get hold of a rat at last a game that doesn't make rats bad guys. The demo also has a quest system and it's pretty simple, pretty generic, like craft a potion, craft a poison potion and you'll get some coins as a reward and these seem to fill up every now and then. So you've got them sort of safe zones or town zones but then you go out into the wilderness and this is where you're going to come across enemies, all sorts of blighted creatures and yes other creatures that you can make your allies. You could have an army of chickens if you really want to. Here you get a sense of what I'm talking about with resources being pretty sparse. But as you get more tools, you'll be able to gather certain items. And this is what you're up against, facing these horrible pulsating purple and pink and dark black mucus creatures. And this one looks like a kind of grounded griffin. What's that other creature that's got like a bird's face but a, a snake on its tail? This is not some cosy farming simulator game or Stardew Valley game. There is a little bit of combat into it. Albert it seems pretty basic, but again, I was only really fighting with a torch at best or maybe when I got my axe. I didn't progress enough to try actually teleporting into other creatures. Well, not for long anyway. I did have a potion that turned me into a hound and I used it, but I accidentally came out of it too quickly and I kind of lost the ability to even see what the hound would actually do. If you're too heavy, you also need to dump some of your items with your followers or put them in sort of magic chests that you find back at these bases. So that was about as far as I got with a dog before I accidentally went back. So this game, I think you're going to have to think carefully about combat sometimes. Getting past like these little mini bosses or points where it's going to stop you exploring further. And you might need a particular type of ally or particular type of potion to transform into a creature before you can progress. And that's why I think this game's pretty unique. Like, I've not come across too much like this. It has got that crafting vibe. I don't think there's too much farming in it. I could be wrong on that. Maybe that opens up a bit later on. And I'm not sure how far the upgrades go and stuff, whether or not you'll find more places that have got different crafting benches. It seems like it is them three basic ones. So definitely in the future, I would like to see more added to it to make that process even more because people that love crafting games like these, they want to have more options and more to do, maybe to get them to that level. You'll come across all sorts of little secrets and chests and this map, this wasteland regenerates. Basically, there's a storm brewing. It's coming from that blight from the serpent rogue on top of the mountain and every now and then it's going to hit this land and if you're stuck in it, then you're going to be brown bread. You can see there's a percentage bar at the top in the middle of the screen going up and that is pretty much telling you you've got to get out of this area before the storm comes. So as soon as you leave this screen and get back to where the little farmstead was, you're going to be safe. But at the moment, if you get caught in this, then the storm is going to start attacking you. I also did come across a sort of tormented uh, little girl sort of zombie soul and it does look like you will have the option not just to kill these guys, but you may even be able to heal them and then use them as your followers. 
And again, I like the idea of this. You've got limited time, you've got to think about it. There's windows that you're gonna to have to go home and craft and get resources and make sure you've got enough health. And then you come back and explore and you've got a little window to do certain things, accomplish certain stuff, like opening chests, exploring hidden passages, or taking on some of these bosses before eventually the storm gets you. It is a bit of a tough game. You are gonna to have to run back to your body to grab all of your stuff once the storm is finished. Going back to our journal, you'll also find again additional details when you come across some of these creatures to study them. That gives you the ability to find out their favorite food. And that's how you're pretty much gonna tame some of these guys, giving them their favorite item that they like to eat. You do also get a bit of information about the rest of the world in this journal as well, as well as obviously all your quests. I really again like the art style from it. You'll come across recipes and tomes and books that will give you more information about either creatures or landscapes that you're going to have to think about how to get through them, like either chopping a tree down with an axe or burning it with your torch. Tools do have durability that goes down pretty quickly. It's very limited in terms of what you're using. The torch won't last that long at all and you're actually going to have to learn the recipe and be able to craft more with certain resources that you'll find. And again, I kind of love this. I like the idea that it's getting off certain things by you just using your brains. Like, I used the torch to get through here, but I didn't set the torch alight on the actual little podiums as we went past. So that means I'm pretty much going to be stuck in that area on the way out unless that torch lasts. You do find NPCs. They, This one here is like a boat guy, and apparently the boat turns up every now and then with more souls that I might be able to use for my allies. So yeah, thinking about the environment, thinking about how to get through places, again, something pretty unique, I like the idea of this one, you know, not every survival or adventure game has to have all of the base building that you come to expect, or just having one home, it does look like you will be able to find multiple farmsteads, the map in the demo is not that big as you would expect, but it seems like it's got enough locations to explore, and I'm guessing that as you progress, some of these wasteland areas are going to get harder, more difficult, and filled with even more enemies and creatures. Can't wait to see where they go with it. I do think at the moment in just the demo I played, it definitely needs more resources scattered around and maybe a little bit more guidance in terms of recipes for tools or be frying them at you a little bit quicker just for the tutorial purposes. And yeah, if you can farm and can grow your own stuff eventually, that sounds good too. But I really love the idea that you may need certain creatures to progress before you go through a certain area. It doesn't look like this is gonna be a button mash. Are you not gonna have 20 different attacks or firing magic balls? or lightning from your hands and stuff. But then again, it depends on the creatures. I've also seen a massive fawn in the game too. I'm pretty sure from some of the trailers I've seen stuff, lots of these creatures do have their own special attacks and stuff, rather than just being tanky, one melee hit creatures. I also really love the fact that you can just have an army of chickens and rats, or you can go all that magical and have a mysterious fawn. So yeah, I was really, really pleasantly, pleasantly pleased with this. Like I said, I've seen screenshots and little teasers of the game a good while ago, and then they went a bit quiet, and I was kind of worried the game had died, but it just looks like they were working super hard with Team 17 to get a playable build. So it's coming out in 2022. I'm going to be all over it when we get a release date, and hopefully I can try it out in more full detail for you. Like I said, I've got some Let's Play videos. Go and check them out if you want to see me do it, if you're a YouTube member, and I may or may not publish them at the weekend. I'm not sure just yet. Let me know. If this video does well enough, I'll go ahead and do it. And of course, more importantly, support the creator. Go follow them. Join their Discord to get more information about the Serpent Rogue. A nice, different style of indie game, a different style of survival crafting game. It's something I really enjoy and really like and want to see more of. And you definitely want to see more of this on my channel as well, rather than just the usual stuff. So until next time, Rat Bags, I hope you found it useful and I'll see you later.